Hi everyone, and welcome back to Macaroon. Fidget toys are really hype right now, and I think it's pretty cool that these have actually evolved from baby toys. The one I'm holding here is called the Dimple, and I bought this two years ago for my daughter Isabel. Someone clearly realized that these could be fun for adults as well, so now you see these small, colorful puppets almost everywhere. The difference between fidget toys and the whole squishy trend from a few years ago is that fidgets don't have to be soft. I love the fact that a fidget toy can be poked, crinkled, clicked, or squeezed, and it just gives you a lot more room for creativity. So in this video, we're going to try out many different textures, ranging from DIY puppets using paper to fake mochis that can be squished through the packaging. This one is based on a real sweet from Boxu, who are kindly sponsoring this video. Boxu is a snack subscription box that celebrates Japanese heritage and traditional food makers. I obviously love Japan, and I realized this even more during the whole pandemic. The hardest part of lockdown for me was all the extra work that came from taking care of a toddler, plus endless grocery shopping, cooking, and cleaning. One of the things that kept me sane during this time was watching Japanese vlog and video walk channels late at night. These videos make me feel like I'm traveling again, and I dream of the day when I can finally go back to Japan. Opening this boxu box was surprisingly emotional because I also realized how long it's been since I've eaten anything new. This box is called Seasons of Japan, and it contains sweet and savory snacks inspired by all four seasons. This is what you'll receive the first time you order boxu, and every box after that will have its own theme. If you want to try this out, then be sure to use my discount code below to get 10% off your first order. What I love most about Boxu is that it doesn't contain those mainstream Japanese candies and chocolates that everyone knows about, but it has rare and exclusive snacks, many of which you can't get anywhere else. One of these is the chocolate strawberry, and I've seen this hyped up on TikTok as well. This is basically a freeze-dried strawberry that's also white chocolate. It's really hard to explain, but you have to taste it to believe it. I offered this to Isabel because strawberries are her favorite thing right now, and I was sure that she was going to love it. Another snack that jumped out at me were these Hanami Dango Mochis. I don't know if you guys get this too, but whenever I see cute food inside packaging, then I really get the urge to squeeze it. This gave me the perfect idea of turning these mochis into a fidget toy, which means you can squish them as often and as hard as you like. The first step, of course, is to make fake mochis, because the real ones will eventually expire or break apart. I'm going to use Oyumaru, which is a plastic that turns soft when heated, and you just have to drop these into hot water for a few minutes. April is cherry blossom season, which is a time for celebration in Japan, so I decided to use my flower spoon just for this DIY. My goal is to make a fake plastic mochi, which I can then use to create a mold. I realized that one piece of Oyumaru wasn't quite enough, so I placed some more into the water to soften up. While I was waiting, I decided to try these mochi puffs, which are so fluffy and they literally melt inside your mouth. A word of caution when working with Oyumaru is to obviously check the temperature before you touch anything with your fingers. I find it's very similar to working with warm wax, and you have a small window of time to sculpt your shape before everything cools down. To make the mochis look more realistic, I deliberately made the surface slightly uneven. And to make the squishy mold, I'm going to use two-part silicone putty. Of course, you can always save some money on materials by just making one mold and using that three times. However, I didn't have time to do this when filming, so that's why I'm molding all three at once. To make the mochis, I'm going to use Sophie and Toffee's squishy gel. Just mix equal parts together and mix well. Then use squishy resin pigments to make colors. White mochi has a warm undertone, so adding a tiny bit of yellow makes it look extremely realistic. Pink was also easy, because I've made this color countless times before for other DIYs. Green was actually the trickiest because it involved mixing three pigments, and I ended up having to make three different batches before getting the closest shade. Now we're going to leave them for 24 hours to cure. These are still quite sticky, so you have to be very careful when taking them out. The real mochis are covered with a dusting of sugar, and I'm going to fake that using baking soda. You don't want to use real sugar here because that can easily melt or go moldy. 
baking soda is a lot more stable, and the grainy texture looks more like sugar compared to cornstarch or talcum powder. So here are the finished mochis, and I think we agree that these look shockingly realistic. The final step is just to switch out the packaging, and I'm going to use a craft knife to cut a slit on the back like this. This creates a hidden opening that we can easily seal up later on. Remove the real mochis, and obviously this is the best time to eat them. These are delicious, and each one has a very light but different flavor. I think they'd go perfectly with an unsweetened tea, such as the green tea which is also included in the boxy box. Now I'm replacing each slot with our fake mochis and carefully sliding it back into the packaging. Trim a piece of tape into a neat rectangle and seal the opening shut. Now you can have fun squishing these as hard and as often as you want. However, make sure that everyone knows this is a fidget toy because it looks so real that you don't want anyone mistaking it for candy. Next, we're going to make some paper poppets. I know these don't have the same feeling as silicone, but I love the simplicity of this DIY. It reminds me a lot of paper squishies, and you can make just about anything using paper, scissors, and tape. You can use colored pencils on white paper, or start with colored paper like I'm doing here. Anything with circles in them can be turned into a poppet design, so let your imagination run free. I'm going to start with the pea pod, which was inspired by the small dimple keyring. Begin by tracing two circles onto green paper and add some cute faces. Now cover everything with clear tape on both sides. Try to stick this down as smoothly as possible to avoid wrinkles and air bubbles. Then cut everything out and make a slit across the radius of the circle. Fold this into a very shallow cone shape and secure it with more tape. I've seen poppet DIYs that require hot glue or lots of small pieces of tape to attach the popping bit onto the base, but this method coming up is a lot easier. After tracing the outline of the two peas, sketch out a shape for the pod. Cut out the middle part using a craft knife, making sure it goes through both layers of paper. Cover one side of the pea pod with clear tape and then trim the edges. Now cut an X shape into both round openings like this. Hold the pot with the sticky side facing up and attach the piece. With this method, you just have to push the tape into the back of the cone and it's done. Repeat the process with the other pot, but this time leave an extra margin of tape around the outside. Cut out little triangles to create tabs and you should end up with something like this. Then simply slide it over the piece and stick everything into place. This method is so quick and easy, and it works for all shapes and sizes. To test that out, I decided to make a koala poppet next. I'm starting out just like before, and the only difference is that I'm leaving a small part of the paper attached when drawing the outline. This makes it a lot easier to line both shapes up perfectly. I also tweaked the method to include tape covering the holes on both sides, which prevents the popping pieces from falling off. So this is how the final puppet base should look, with tabs on the left, which is the front, and no tabs on the right, which is the back. Now attach the nose and ears to the base using the sticky side of the tape, and then fold the front shut. Press the edges together, and your koala puppet is done. I love this one because it looks so different to normal fidget toys, and I wish they made a real one like this. The final project is a peach squishy phone case. This was based on a super viral TikTok clip that I made of the phone case I got from AliExpress. So many people wanted to know where to get a case like that, so I decided to create a DIY version as well. I'm starting with polymer clay to create a fake peach for the mold. You're basically making a heart shape, so it's pretty easy to sculpt. Then add the stem and leaf and make sure all the edges are firmly attached. I baked this for half an hour at 110 degrees Celsius or 230 degrees Fahrenheit, and here we have our finished peach. This time I'm going to use Oyumaru to make the mold. Since this is a lot thicker than putty, I find it's easier to press it over the item you're molding instead of the other way around. Push the sides upwards and make sure they're picking up the whole outer edge of the peach. Now I'm just mixing up some pink squishy gel, pouring it into the mold and letting it cure for 24 hours. 
Of course, making a phone case like this is quite a bit more expensive than buying one, but I think it's fun to know that you can create just about anything from scratch. I'm going to use one of these plain silicone cases as the base. I mentioned this in a very old video, but glue doesn't work very well when attaching squishies to silicone. So the best method is to actually sew it on using needle and thread. I'm just making one large stitch across the peach and then tying a knot on the other side. To add details, I'm using a mixture of acrylic paint and white glue. Paint also doesn't stick very well to these squishies, so try not to cover any area that you'll be pressing. The glue makes it more flexible, but it can still peel off. I decided to decorate the rest of the case using lots of smaller peaches. Once again, this is fairly easy to paint because they basically look like hearts. Then use a darker shade to bring out the peach shape by splitting it down the middle. I recommend using a dark brown instead of black for shading because brown mixes really nicely into all those pink and peach tones. I'm also using a pale yellow for the highlight, which gives the peach that warm, fuzzy look. And now our DIY peach case is done. Homemade squishies tend to be a bit sticky, and hand sanitizer gel works great against this. Just add a tiny bit on top, and you can squish it around without changing the color or transparency. Thank you so much for watching until the end, and be sure to check out Boxu if you love Japanese culture and food. The very first box will contain two of these dango mochi candies that I used to make the fidget toy. As long as we're all stuck at home, I think this is the closest we can get to having an authentic experience of Japan. I've also linked my favorite Japanese vlog and video walk channels below, so be sure to check those out if you're interested. I'm very active on TikTok as well, so feel free to follow me there. I'm Joanna, thank you for watching, and I'll see you soon.